This is another video about Einstein's one second particle of light that we call a photon. And as you can see here, my posts on Reddit are still not going over very well. Like a lead balloon. I thought this would be a good place to discuss the math behind this equation. And I'm really trying to figure out why some people don't see the problem of the one second photon. Making these posts on Reddit helps me gather comments from those that oppose this point of view. Unfortunately, these conversations usually get cut short, and you can't see them because many of them get removed. And because my posts legitimately go against the mainstream, many of my comments get downvoted and I can't even post in these communities anymore. But at least I have been able to gather up two common examples from the opposing viewpoint of how I am wrong. And that's what we're going to look at in this video. So we are all looking at the same equation. And one side says that time doesn't matter. And I say it absolutely does matter. Now, we can't both be right here. Something's got to give, and one side of this argument has to be wrong. So let's figure this out by looking at two arguments that support the side that believes that time does not matter for this equation. In the previous video, I showed a light pulse of about one-eighth of a second long. It was the color red, but the math showed that it would not produce the correct amount of energy for red photons. So here is the first argument to show what I did wrong there. We both agree that I take the 1 8 second and multiply it by the speed of light, but then what I didn't do was take that answer and then divide it by 1 8 of a second. Now hang on, what this person is saying is to multiply in 1 8 of a second and then turn around and divide that one eighth of a second right back out. So I'm thinking you're proving my point because you're starting with the speed of light and then all you're doing is converting it back to the speed of light. So for example, you have the speed of light times the one eighth second and that puts you right here with this equation. And then if we divide out the one eighth second, we're right back to the speed of light. And now these equations match. Which proves my point that you need one second's worth of distance at the speed of light in order to divide in the wavelength of light to get the proper frequency. Now I couldn't believe the argument would be that easy to refute. So I went back and looked at this line. The speed of light per one eighth second. And this is the fundamental flaw in this first argument. It's the idea of velocity being an instantaneous measurement. Which means if my measurement device says I'm going 220 per hour, then I get to use that value of 220 any way I want. Now you might think that I've just cherry picked this argument but it seems to be common. When they use the idea of the speedometer in their comments, it seemed to me like they were arguing my side of the story. It seems to me common sense that if you were to look down at your speedometer for five seconds, that you only traveled about 0.3 kilometers during that five seconds. You can only use the value of 220 when you have gone the full hour. And you cannot use the full value of 300 million meters unless you've spent one full second of time. And if we look at rate in terms of mathematics, for example, miles per hour in transportation, the benefit in terms of miles of travel you get from spending an hour of travel or the cost in time. Okay, here is the next argument. If you're going to change the time in the equation, you have to scale Planck's constant. Now, when people said change Planck's constant, 
I said no way because that would mess up the black body radiation equation. But when they said scale Planck's constant, I said, okay, let's see what that looks like. So this person gave an example of scaling the H and the F to the microsecond. So I looked at this for a while and decided to rescale everything to the femtosecond. I liked this because it made it easier to see what is going on. One femtosecond matches up perfectly with the 300 nanometer ultraviolet photon. First, let's look at how to rescale Planck's constant to the femtosecond. The basic units for a joule of energy is mass, length, and time. We just need to replace the second with femtosecond. Here are the units for a joule, and we can change this to a femtosecond. You can see that now it's 10 to the 30 joules. So if you take the value of Planck's constant when it is in terms of seconds, we would make this negative 64 and change this to femtoseconds. So you can see that this value to the negative 64th in terms of femtoseconds is equivalent to the Planck's constant with negative 34 in terms of seconds. And that's how we get the rescaled Planck's constant when we use femtoseconds for the joule and the second. And frequency is really easy because it is one cycle per femtosecond, and that is equivalent to 300 nanometer wavelength. So let's calculate this using the rescaled frequency and Planck's constant. So here is E equals HF when it is scaled to the femtosecond. And you can see that the energy of this femtosecond is nowhere near what it needs to be in order to have the energy of an ultraviolet photon. When this is scaled back to the second, you can see that this 300 nanometer cycle has the equivalent energy of Planck's constant. When you scale this equation down, it is proving that each wavelength has H amount of energy. This is exactly what I'm saying when I use this 3 hertz frequency example. Their argument is actually proving my side of the story. You can see when you run this calculation that the photon energy is off by one quadrillion. Why is it off by one quadrillion? Because you have the speed of light per second divided by the 300 nanometer wavelength and that is equal to 1,000 terahertz, or 1 petahertz. This is a factor of 1 quadrillion, and it's directly related to the per second value of the speed of light. Okay, so I have delivered my reasoning, and this reasoning should suggest the following question. Why does the unit analysis of E equals HF allow you to get away with erasing one second's worth of time from reality? And the answer to that question is the reason that Lori Gardy proposed the modified unit analysis. And that is discussed in this video. So maybe this is the last video that will discuss the Einstein one second photon problem. So I will put together this playlist to consolidate the topic and help people access it easier. This is a copy of the original post that was removed. You can hit pause and take a look at it. And this is the original post that started the Reddit adventure. And I would like to thank the person that created this post because it allowed the message to get tested against many more scientific minds. I'm hoping that more people will share this information so we can engage in more debates to figure out what is the bad science that is out there. And again, thanks for listening.